If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Gnadenthal Crossplay. But before that, this video is brought to you by Soul Farmer and Fam Farmer. Thank you for being Farmer Barons. So the Gnadenthal Crossplay map can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now, this map was originally released, as the description is going to say, in a 4X variant. That map was originally released by, way back in August of 2022. And it has gone through several updates, with the most recent update being last week. But now the crossplay variant is out, which means that this is a standard size map as opposed to being the 4X map that it was originally released as. That way, everybody has a chance to enjoy it. This map is based off a of real town of Gnadenthal and the fields around it, but quite a few things were changed to improve gameplay. This map has been downscaled from 4X to standard size for crossplay compatibility. If you want to experience the realistic size of the map, check out the 4X version on the Mod Hub. Now that's of course gonna be for PC players only. This map offers over 70 fields, new crops in flax, lentils, peas, alfalfa, clover, triticale, rye, spelt, mustard, and millet. Support for swathing, custom weather and growth, three farms, nearly 50 houses with individual viable farmlands and sleeping points, two rivers and two ponds in which you can refill your trailers with water, 50 collectibles, Four productions, refillable point for seeds, solid and liquid fertilizer, as well as lime, herbicide, and salt. 32 paintable ground types. This map is perfect for any big scale farming operations. And this map has two required mods in the Swather Pack and the Pickup Header Pack. That's, of course, if you do want to make use of the support for crop swathing. With that, let's go ahead and load on in. Now, in addition to the required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that all the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farmer mode. In addition, you do not own any vehicles nor do you own any land in those alternate game modes. In addition, if you happen to be playing on a low-end system, I did try this map out on a low-end system that I have with AMD integrated graphics, and I found that I was able to obtain a solid 60 FPS regardless of where I was or looking on this map. It is going to operate fairly well on literally just about anything that will run farm sim. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now this is a very agricultural centric map and as such a significant portion of the map is dedicated to fields and agriculture as a whole. This map does have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 in addition to our red beets, carrots, and parsnips from the premium expansion if you have that enabled. But we also have millet, spelt, rye, triticale, mustard, flax, peas, lentils, alfalfa, and clover as added crops. If we take a look at our farmland screen, you can see there is an abundance of little farmlands. That is because the way that this map is set up, you can literally buy any house on the map, and any house on the map could be your farmhouse because they all have sleep triggers tied to them. So if you decide that, well, you, you don't want to own the house here at farmland id 139 instead you want to move in across the street from your farm well you can buy farmland id 74 and use that farmhouse as your farm house with your sleep trigger because all of these have sleep triggers and all of them or any of them can be your potential farmhouse now we start out with farmland id 121 that is the main starting farm that can be bought for 124,000 $650. In addition to that, we have a second farm that is available here at Farmland ID 38. That can be bought for $108,000. And 
And then we have a third farm at Farmland ID 132 that can be bought for $51,834. All of the farms on this map are animal free. So this is basically an arable map. Unless, of course, you want to put down your own animal pins. If we take a look at our farmland lease screen, this is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We can now go and cross-reference this farmland lease screen with our field calculator screen to see the sizes of each particular field. And as the description said, we've got fields that range anywhere from 0.3 hectares. Those would be all of the various yards, all the way up to 12 hectares, I believe, is going to be one of the larger fields on the map, field 71. We do have a custom crop calendar on this map. You can see those planting and harvest schedules here. And we can see how then our new crops are also going to be treated with respect to our crop calendar. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in FS22, as well as our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of the base game production items, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game production items as well. Now, there are quite a few additional production items and crops, of course, that we can sell. We do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also do have a stone crusher in order to get rid of our stones. With respect to the custom crops, we do have the ability to sell all of our custom crops. We have alfalfa, alfalfa hay, and alfalfa silage, as well as clover, clover hay, and clover silage available to us. We have the ability to produce mustard oil down at our oil mill, and then we also have flax straw. If you are going to play with your farm production pack, we do not have the ability of selling any of our washed root crops. We also do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. If you do want to get into a little bit of forestry, I think you're going to have to, one, plant a bunch of trees because there aren't really a whole lot of forestable trees on this map, but you will need to put down your cell points for those. The premium expansion, though, is indeed covered, as is if you're going to be using the straw harvest. We have separated manure here and, no, pumps and hoses, sorry, and then straw harvest with respect to our hay and straw pellets. We also do have multiple cell points for those. As far as our starting fleet, we own everything that is in our starting fleet. None of it is leased and is all very well maintained. We do not have any animals on this map at the start. We have contracts on the other hand, and we also do not own any production chains, but we also do have 50 custom collectibles that we can collect here on this map. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start off the John Deere 6250R and a 7810 medium tractors. We've got the John Deere T560 Harvester that is paired up with the 625X Grain Header. We've got our 1986 pickup truck and the Brantner TA23065 Power Tube Plus Trailer. We have the Grimmy Evo 290, GL420, and KS754 Potato Planter, Harvester, and Topper. We have the Echo Mott Plow, as well as the Samgard 9500K Cultivator. We have the Rebel Classic 600T Disc Caro and the TerraSem C6F Cedar. And do note the additional crop icons with respect to the new custom crops that you can also plant with this cedar. As far as our planter goes, we have the Presea 4500 2C Super. And that is going to work with just our fairly standard crops that we can typically use a planter for. We've got the Hauer XB150 front loader arms. For the front loader arms, we have a pallet fork and universal bucket. We have the Nardi N40BX header trailer for our grain header. And we have the 1800 kilogram John Deere front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, well, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. 
but we do have the header pickup pack and the swather pack that are flagged as required mods. And those are gonna be here. And that's basically if you wish to swath any crops. Now I'm just gonna quickly tab up here to our starting farm location. Let me pull up the map for that. And like I said, if you wanted to sell the farmhouse down there and instead buy this farmhouse right across the street, you could do so because literally every house on this map can be bought and could be your farmhouse. So most of our machinery is going to be in this large machine shed right off the road. We have a two bay shed here. This is going to be perfect for dumping in root crops or bales or just storing machinery. So we've got our front loader equipment there. Around the back of the shed, we do have our base game silo dump and fill point. We have some silo extensions here associated with our silo system. And then we have a three bay garage. And that is pretty much our starting farm location. Now, right across the street is, let's say, farm number two. We have another large machine shed here with a little different color of siding. And we're gonna need to buy this land in order to make use of it. So let me go ahead and pick this up as well as the other farm and we'll get on with the show. And now that we own this farmland, well, we're gonna be able to open the shed and interact with the silos that are placed here so we have a large machine shed we have a large bale shed here and then we have three meridian grain bins located right there now as far as our third farm well it's going to be up the road a little bit we're just going to run here real quick we're going to go up the road we're going to make a turn and here we are at farm number three. Now this one really just has some sheds. Doesn't have any real silos associated with it. Now as far as farmland being customizable, yes, all the farmland is completely customizable. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can sell every farmhouse also if you actually own the land. So farms are completely customizable because we can sell the sheds and the silos at them, assuming we own the land. And we can also sell our farmhouse as well as any other farmhouse on the map if we again own the land. Over here at our vehicle shop, we have a methane filling station as well as a charging station. We have our vehicle workshop trigger it is located right here. So I do believe that maybe, maybe I was a little mistaken. I thought this was going to be our vehicle shop, but I believe I'm mistaken now. I believe that this is simply a repair shop. Let me zoom in a little bit. It says workshop. So, yep, there is our vehicle shop further to the north. Now, I do believe that I just have recalled completely missing over the soil map. Now this map is making use of the generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how it is being applied to these fields. Given the high number of fields that we have on this map, we get a really, really good picture here of that generic soil map. We can see the silty clay that is going around the map to the north, west, and then down to the south as well as the swath of silty clay over here to the east. And then around all of that clay, we've got bands of loam, sandy loam, and loamy sand. Now let's take a little bit of altitude here. And overall, the map is going to be fairly flat, as you can see. We made our way further to the south. This is going to be where our starting farm is located. And then a little bit further south to that, we have our farmhouse where we loaded in for the very first time. 
and that is going to be located right here. Now to the south, east, west, we really don't have a whole lot going on. It's just a whole lot of agriculture. And we have some more farmhouses that we could buy and make use of. We have our dairy. Now the dairy is just a standard base game dairy. Nothing super fancy going on here. Now we do not own the dairy and that is why we are not seeing any triggers pop up. We have another shed there that again is going to be usable if we buy the land. We already talked about the secondary farm located right there. We will be able to use water and rivers as fill points. And we have our bakery. Again, we don't own the bakery land, so therefore the triggers are not popping up. Another three bay garage. And then that is pretty much what is south of this road that cuts the map in basically half. All the other points of interest are going to be here to the north. Now, with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such, we have four productions built into this map, a grain mill, oil mill, bakery, and a dairy. Two of those have been customized in the grain mill and the oil mill. Those two have been customized to provide a little bit different outputs than you might be expecting from the base game. I'll be showing you those here in a moment. With respect to the ability to sell all of our basing crops, animal outputs, and productions, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well, because we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basing crops, animal outputs, and productions. Let's go ahead and take a look now at our custom oil and grain mill. So at our grain mill, we have the ability to make flour from wheat, barley, oat, sorghum, as well as millet, spelt, rye, and triticale. In addition, our oil mill is going to have the ability to make sunflower oil, canola oil, mustard oil, and olive oil. Here we have our vehicle shop. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra and just see where our vehicles are going to spawn. We're going to spawn here behind the shop. A fairly large area for our vehicles to spawn, which is going to be good because, again, you're going to be able to merge a whole lot of these fields into mega fields if you really want to. Or otherwise, well, we do have some fairly nice size fields, even if you don't merge them. And therefore, you're probably going to want to buy some fairly large machinery. Our dealer trigger is located here around the back. We have our stone crusher. A buy point for liquid herbicide and liquid fertilizer. And then we have our buy point for seed, lime, and solid fertilizer. We have our fuel buy point located right there. This is going to be our third farm. Farmland ID one twenty. Seven. And once we buy that, we do see our trigger for our silo. We have two three-sided silage bunkers, one and two. And we've got a modest-sized machine shed here as well. Here we have our grain mill that we talked about. We have a grain selling station. We have our oil mill with our triggers located there. Across the street, we have our animal dealer. 
with our animal dealer sell point. Our animal buy point. And that is pretty much the map in a nutshell. So, with respect to buildings and ground textures where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Well, let's come down here and take a look. We really haven't taken a look at build mode. So let's go ahead and go into build mode, landscaping, painting. Here we can see all of the various ground textures. We do have a couple kind of custom textures going on here. A whole lot of various iterations of dirt and gravel. With respect to plants, fairly standard plants and fairly standard trees. No custom animal areas, but we do see that our animal feed requirements have been slightly modified. So let's go ahead and take a look at our animal food overview when we leave this screen. We do have the ability to place our grain mill and oil mill down here as well. We wish to add more to those. And then as far as building goes, well, we have fairly standard buildings. Nothing really seems to be built in from the map standpoint. With respect to our animal food requirements, you can see that we have also alfalfa silage and clover silage is gonna satisfy the silage requirement. Alfalfa hay and clover hay is gonna satisfy the hay requirement and grass is gonna be satisfied with grass, alfalfa, or clover as far as our cows go. Our sheep are gonna accept grass, hay, alfalfa, alfalfa, hay, clover, or clover hay. Our pigs are going to accept peas as a base food. They're going to accept triticale and millet as grain. They're going to accept lentils, rye, and spelt as protein. And then they are going to accept potatoes, sugar beets, carrots, parsnips, red beets, fairly standard root crops. Our horses are going to accept rye, peas, triticale, and millet in addition to oats and sorghum as a base crop. For our hay, we have hay, alfalfa, hay, clover hay, and hay pellets. And then our chickens are going to be satisfied not only with wheat and barley and sorghum, but they're also going to be satisfied with triticale, rye, lentils, peas, spelt, and millet. So quite a few various additives with respect to our animal feed if we do put down animal pins and we do go to keep animals here on this map. Now, as far as scoring goes, trigger and interactive areas were clearly marked. We're going to give the map another point there. So that does indeed give this map a full score of 5 out of 5. Very well done map. It's a fairly basic map. Not a whole lot going on here. And to some, that may be a hindrance. To others, that may be a benefit. I think this would be an excellent mod map for a new player that is maybe looking to go outside of a Giants delivered map for the very first time. It's not going to be overwhelming or over daunting, but it will have some added crops and some added other productions in order to give a little bit of a spice to life, but not overly spicy to the point where it burns. I'd love to know your all's thoughts down in the comments below. With respect to this map, did you play the original 4X map on PC? Are you maybe willing to give this a single size standard map a go, maybe with some of your crossplay buddies? And until next time, happy farming.